Hey, what's up, guys? It's Josh here at Porter Valley Ranch, and today's Friday, which means it's time for another episode of Farm Friday at Porter Valley Ranch. Before we get into today's video, I want to make sure that you are aware of something. We have been giving things away on our Farm Friday videos here at Porter Valley Ranch. So the last two weeks we have given things away to one person who watches and comments on our video, then the next week we pick one of those winners. So we had a winner last week and we're going to have a winner today, but make sure you comment on this video so that you can be entered into the drawing to win something. Make sure you stick around till the end of the video because we'll give you another chance to be entered in today's video, but right now we need to pick a winner from last week's video. Today is January 27th, so I'm going to take 1, 2, and 7, add them together, and that's going to give me the number 10, so I'm going to scroll down to the 10th comment, and that's going to be our winner for today's video. All right, so this was the video from last week. It was actually called We Have a Winner, and we have a winner today. It is Jeannie Lipsky. Jeannie has been watching us for a very long time. She's great about always commenting on our videos, so thank you so much for watching. Be sure to keep watching so you could win again. Next week, we're gonna start giving away some t-shirts, so make sure to stick around for that. Now, I am not gonna lie. Today is one of those days that was tough. Yesterday, I came up to feed our sheep, and we had a problem. I have one of our baby doll ewes named Queenie who had miscarried one of her lambs. By looking at the size of the lamb, I could tell that it was probably about a month premature, but she went ahead and she had passed that lamb. And then whenever I got closer to her, I realized she had another problem. She had a uterine prolapse. If you don't know what that is, do not Google it. You will find pictures that you do not want to see. Um, it basically means that there were some sort of complications when she was passing that lamb and her uterus kind of came out of her body and it had probably happened about an hour or two before I got up here. So she was in a lot of distress. Um, the lamb had already died. I don't know if it was alive when it was born, but whenever they're born that much premature, they're probably not going to survive. Um, their chances are very small. So at first I was kicking myself because I wasn't here when it happened and I wasn't able to catch the problem. But the truth is I probably wouldn't have been able to do anything anyways uh, for the lamb. Now, as far as for Queenie, I don't know. To be honest, we've been doing this for a couple years now. We've had a lot of sheep have babies and we have never had a prolapse. Um, so this was new to us. The first thing I did was of course I assessed the situation. I got her alone. I got her in a stable place. And then I called our veterinarian. And our veterinarian unfortunately said that it was going to be a minimum surgery of about $1,500. That was just kind of the starting point to try and put her uterus back into her. It's a pretty invasive surgery, obviously. And he said the risk of infection is really high. A lot of times they have to end up doing a hysterectomy on the animal and their chances of recovery are pretty slim and the cost, to be honest, was just way too high for us. Um, that animal was worth $750 to $1,000 for us, and when the costs of a surgical procedure go above what the animal is worth, unfortunately, that's something that we just can't do here. It's not good business, and it's just not something we can make a habit of doing. So I had to make the hard decision to go ahead and put her down because it was pretty evident in the hour long that I was talking to the vet and working with her. She was in a lot of distress. Um, she was in really bad condition and I just didn't want her to suffer anymore. So I had to put her down, which is something that is never easy. Um, I've had to do a lot of things with animals. I have had my fair share of loss here on our farm and working at my dad's farm. We've had to do minor surgeries as far as like amputations and things like that. But when you have to put an animal down, um, it really is tough. So it was a hard day for me and it left me in down spirits. Um, but it's just kind of unfortunately part of farming. We talked about that last week on Farm Friday that there are aspects of this life that I don't like and that I don't like doing and that sometimes gets you discouraged. And that was one of those things for me. So beat myself up for about 24 hours, but I'm here today to tell you guys that 
no, I'm not going to stop. Obviously, uh, we're going to keep doing our farming operation with our sheep and our goats and our chickens and all those things. But there are some things that I could do better. So even though that lamb was premature, it did give me a wake up call that lambing season is right around the corner. And there are some things that I need to do to prepare for lambing season. So the barn I'm in right now, this stall is actually called the birthing suite. We have had lots of lambs born right here in this stall or the stall next to it. And so I knew that with lambing season around the corner, I need to prepare this area so that it gives them the most optimal area to have their lambs and also a way that we can check on them easily. So the first thing I did was I installed cameras right up here behind me. The cameras give us a 24 hour access to be able to check on these stalls and check on the sheep from wherever we are. In the middle of the night, if it's freezing outside, I don't have to get up and put my clothes on and boots on and come out here and check them. I can just check the camera. If I'm at work, if I'm at a ball game, I can look on those cameras and I can see. We went with the Blink camera system, which is a outdoor all purpose wireless system. Uh, we can put those cameras literally anywhere on our property as long as it reaches the Wi-Fi and we can see those. So we installed two cameras so that we can see both of the stalls. And as the animal gets closer, we'll know when they're getting closer because if you remember back when we did the breeding harness, we marked down when those animals got marked for the first time or when they were exposed to a ram for the first time. So we can get in a general couple week ballpark of when they're gonna start having those lambs. So we'll start putting them in these areas and keeping an eye on them both in person and through our cameras. But if you look around at this barn, it is a barn and barns get used and abused. So I've got a couple things I need to do. This window is broken right here. I've got the skirting down here that has been busted out. So I need to fix that. Also, that is letting a lot of draft in and we've got some really bad weather coming in in the next couple weeks. So I'm gonna make that more solid. I've got a couple little holes here I've got a panel that busted out here in this roof. And then the other problem with this area is that this whole bottom floor needs to come out. So over the summer, we feed some hay in here. We feed a little bit of grain in here. And obviously whenever the animals come in here, they eat and they trample and they poop in this area. And this thing needs to get cleaned out. That's not a fun job, but it is a job that needs to happen and it is something that we can use. We can take all of this material, we can put it in our compost pile, and then we'll be able to put that on our garden in the coming spring. Okay, one thing that's interesting here, um, as I'm getting all of this debris off of the floor, you can see over here is what it looked like. And then you can see over here, this is the original dirt floor, which is pretty hard and compact. We're up here on this sandstone hill. Um, but as I get into this material, you can see that the top layer is mostly just hay and manure. And then as I get a little bit lower, um, this is probably about six months old, so it gets a little more composted. But when I get way down here into like the very bottom layers, this is basically what you're gonna buy for garden soil. If you go to a garden center or big box store, um, you're looking for that good black soil. So if you have bought uh, compost or potty mix or any of that kind of stuff lately, you know that it's pretty expensive and we're basically building our own. So this was an unintentional <laughs> compost bin. Um, 
The reason it's so bad, I made the mistake in the fall of putting a bunch of hay in here, stacking hay up in this stall. And then at one point the sheep got past the gate and they came in. So they ate a lot of the hay, which made the bales come apart and it just kind of got compacted down. So usually I wouldn't have this much stuff in here, but when they broke the gate, um, they broke the bales, they eat the good stuff out of the hay and leave the rest, which is kind of like the heavy grass or the straw, and then it just compacts down. But the good news is this isn't wasted, um, especially this bottom stuff I can use to compost in the garden. So I'm probably gonna take this dark stuff and just put it straight onto the top of Rachel's garden beds. I'll take the rest of this material and I'll put it over on our compost pile so that it doesn't go to waste. But I need to make sure that I don't let it get this bad again. And if I don't put hay in here that they break, then it shouldn't get near this bad, near this fast. All right, after about an hour of raking and shoveling and hauling and dumping, I'm gonna take a quick, much needed break to show you guys something concerning I found. Uh, this is a reason if you watch farm vlogs and farming channels, you hear them talking about needing to keep your hay dry. This is the reason is down in here, uh, there's some layers of hay and there is mold down in here. And this is where there's a hole in the roof, which is leaking down on this old hay. And it's actually sprouted. Now, I don't know if these are sprouts from, um, from the seed that I've been feeding, or if it's actually the hay that sometimes has some seeds in it that's sprouting. But the sheep or the goats will get in here and they will eat this. Uh, there's not a lot of green outside, and this place kind of acts as a, as a greenhouse. So they'll get in here, they'll get really excited about this green stuff that's growing. But right underneath that green stuff, I get into this moldy hay and mold is something that can really cause a lot of problems for your animals. If you feed your animals moldy hay, it can be extremely toxic, it can even be fatal. So uh, keep your hay dry, or if you're in our instance where you have some old hay in a barn, make sure that it's not sprouting because they're gonna get in here and they're gonna start wanting to eat this grass and then they're gonna get underneath there and they're gonna get into the moldy hay and then you're gonna have some problems. So another good reason for me to get this stuff out of here, as you can see, I've got this part back down to the bottom of the baseboard, which is my goal. And I've got this stuff over here left to do. About 30, 45 more minutes of hard work and this place will be cleaned up. All right, it is the next morning, which is actually Friday. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret since you hung around till the end of the video. I actually film Farm Friday videos on Thursday, usually. So I have a chance to edit them and post them and all that. Uh, but don't tell anybody. So today is actually Friday, and I'm gonna go check up here in the barn because I needed to let it dry out before I did any more projects. If I was gonna do some painting and hanging that plywood and stuff like that. So it should be dried out, let's go check it. Started walking out here and all the sheep start piling out of the one stall because I had the other side blocked out. season where you need to come up and check every morning and make sure that nobody's having a lamb and there isn't anything happening today so that's good let's check on our project all right we've got a little bit of cleanup left to do but um 
you can see in here, I power washed all of this wood off and it's never gonna be perfectly clean because it is a barn, but it sure made these walls a lot cleaner. And then in this room, knocked all the dust off of the top. You can see down here on the bottom, um, the dirt and debris was at the top of this board. So I got down a good eight to 12 inches back to the original floor, which is a lot harder, uh, more compact surface. So now I can come in today, I can put the plywood here to block that draft. You can start fixing these little windows. We've got some plexiglass. And then I will replace all of the flooring with some new straw bedding. So that when they start having lands, it's a good clean environment for them. So this is a project that I've been needing to do and I was putting off for a while. That happens sometimes. So what is a project that you need to do that you've been putting off? This is your second chance to win our Farm Friday giveaway. So comment below, I need to dot, 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 whatever you need to do. And that will give you a second chance to enter into the giveaway, which is another Porter Valley Ranch hat. So comment below, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you like this video. Check next week. We'll see who the winner is. And thank you guys for coming along with us on Farm Friday at Porter Valley Ranch.